I think they will be fine. But yeah, yesterday it was against MYM, a team who basically allows you to do whatever you want. So let's see what they can do today against SK. Mm -hmm. Right away, first couple of bands. Cast in, Lissandra taken off for SK Gaming. Focusing on those flexible picks. And of course, the Nidalee and the Lulu taken away. So they're targeting some different sides. Yeah, but gaming. two comfort picks. Svenskans in Italy. He's, he was one of the best players on it early on. We know he loves to invade into the enemy jungle, look for these one-on-one -on -one fights. That's gone now. And Lulu, the reason I like this one is because in rated for me, when he's not playing like a disengaged support who like Lulu, then he's not really performing too well. His Leona yesterday was not good. That was a poor performance from him. And I like this ban here from Elements. They might want to try and push him on a support where he needs to make some plays, which is not the N-rated style. And also, of course, Lulu adds so much uh, lane pressure and fast pushing ability, which is good to shut down. Mm. Yeah, they ban away the Rek'Sai as well. And SK immediately responding and taking the Zed for Fox. So this is very important for SK. Against Fnatic, they lost the Zed. It was first week by Febivan, and there was a big deal of why they lost the game, because suddenly the best duelists in the game were gone. And also, Fibber got these two early kills. Now, they get Zed for themselves. They need to win the laning phase. Zed is a fantastic laner. He has the ability to snowball. And he has a lot of pressure in the lane itself, which allows your jungler now to go aggressive into the enemy jungle because he knows Zed can join him. And that two and two together can pop nearly every target. But I love the response also from Elements. It's a good start to this pick and ban phase because Maokai for Kevin, I want to see him on these more tanky, supportive top laners and not a carry one yet because he's not at his old level mm. compared to what we saw last year two years ago from kevin so i like the fact they put him on this more defensive style and say it's going to be about frogging and reckless to deal the damage and we need you to be one of the big you know utility focused laners exactly let him ease into it and shook of course getting that comfortable pickup as well on the other side sk gaming speaking of comfort well forgiven is going to get his hands on graves if he wants it looks like he will they also take the morgana again Another flex pick, however, only two ways it can go this time around. Yeah, and I would expect it to be an enraded pick, simply because he needs to play these disengaged supports from him, and Freddy normally goes for a more aggressive top laner. Morgana is not really one you pick, and then you just dominate someone one-on-one. -on -one. No, you push the lane a lot. You can always have a safe laning phase, and you can chip away at a tower. That could be the go-to tactic for SK. But then later in the game, you don't really split push on the Morgana. You're more about pure team fighting, which is not the Freddy style in itself. And of course, you mentioned the Lee Sin. Well, we know Svenskan, he loves to invade early on. He loves to fight the jungler. He's that human ward who gets the information for his team. Lee Sin is going to be tough to deal with, especially because Rek'Sai and Nidalee has been banned. Those are the two junglers who could outfight him in a one-on-one. -on -one. So you might just see Svenskan go for the Jarvan pick, and then he won't be able to invade on the Lee Sin. Oh, yes, indeed. Now, at the last moment, Elements, they're going to take the Orianna pickup for Froggen. Okay. Krepo's getting the Thresh, so they're saving the AD carry for last. Yeah, saving the AD carry. I wonder if they want to do Callista again, like they did yesterday. Because they have a fairly good comp to peel for Callista. You have the Orianna, Maokai, obviously, within the, as a big frontline tank. You have the Thresh coming in, so they can do Callista. It's just going to be a tough laning phase against the Graves. So it would force an Elements lane swap, and we don't know how they're synergy of practices with Krepo in a lane swap because they, it often takes a lot of time to really get everything working in a swap and when you change some players it's both the top lane and the support two of the very important members in a lane swap itself i'm not sure elements want to go for it but we're gonna have to see yeah we'll be out of sk i want to see what they do go for in this last. I, I i really think the morgana support would be a good pick in this situation but and the it, annie yeah. yeah it's locked in so they go for that one and then of course last moment they're going to switch over for sven Skarin to take the rengar I want to okay. point out really quickly, though, for this Annie pickup, this is the champion that n -rated's died the most on when they played their games. And I'm not 100% sure I agree with that pickup. It's a champion where he now needs to make plays. And again, it's not been the best role for n -rated. He's a lot better as a defensive support. But what SK Gaming has done here, with the Morgana as well, they have insanely strong lanes all around. Morgana top lane, one-on-one, -on -one, she can push against nearly every laner in the game. And also in a lane swap, she's so good at farming, just putting down that pool, you cannot deny her farm. Zed obviously in the mid lane, we know he's one of the best laners there. And Annie Graves, that level 6 combo is so much burst, and just the early push you can do as well. It gives SK Gaming fantastic strong lanes all around, where Elements, 
a lot more passive focus. Oriana's gonna sit back and farm until she has at least two items completed. Maokai as well. He's not gonna be the guy to dominate his laning phase. That could be risky for Elements because the way to beat SK is by winning that early game and now you allow them to have at least a stronger lanes. I wanna see if Elements can handle that. I wanna see if SK can handle this bot lane though. I mean, Reckless, we haven't seen him play Jinx in a while, but the last time he did, it was very explosive. And with Krepo at his side, I am really excited for this. This this says you can really snowball if you start picking a couple yeah. of kills. If you do get out of the laning phase here from Elements, they have a fantastic late game team fight. Like it's absolutely insane. If you go to late game in this here in this game and Elements just go five together, you should be able to win every single fight because SK Gaming's comp is all about spiking early and mid game. Like the basically like like we have seen from SK before and they have been able to pull it off. But just the last few weeks. They've been losing the early game. Now they have the stronger matchups. They have a good early game. They have a fantastic mid game spike as well. Graves, Zed, Morgana, everything is mm -hmm. flawless or perfect in, in the mid game. But they have to get that lead. If they don't, Elements will be able to drag it to late game and they will be able to win the game. Indeed they will. We'll see how that works out. There we go. <laughs> Took just a moment for both the coaches to get down off the stage. They're gonna be hopping off there. So as we do load into this game, don't forget to keep tweeting at LLE Esports with the hashtag SKWin or ELWin. Let us know if you think Element's new roster can stand up to this SK Gaming powerhouse. I'm very excited to see how this yeah. one shakes out. Deficio should be a massive clash between SK Gaming and Element's revitalized with the form of El Crepo loading up onto the rift right now. The crowd is amped. Let's see how it goes. See how it goes. The real test here now for Crepo and Reckless, and they have not exactly picked a comp. That's gonna make it easier for Elements to do well in the early game. This is Sin pick from Shook. I feel like that can be very important because when you play Zed into Ari, or sorry, Zed into Ariana, Zed will have all the lane pressure, which means if you have a strong jungler who can invade, you can again you can set up these extremely aggressive plays very early in the game. But Rengar cannot go in against the Lee Sin at least not before level six points. So that means Shook should be fairly safe in his own jungle. And we're gonna see Sven more focus on getting that level six point and then look for the ganks to really start snowballing his lanes. As long as elements do stay safe, and they historically have been quite good at that in the early game. I wanna it see really how their mid game goes. Comp. It really is. It really no, is. We're, we're, go we're come full circle at this point. Sven Skaren's gonna run into the ball. Or rather, it's going to come to him. Elements actually, well, okay, forget about passivity because they are looking to make some early moves. There's a dark binding landing on Kevin. He doesn't care about that, though. Not all Elements is doing here is just getting down these deep wards we so often see at level one to get that extra information. You have the ward placed between the two towers in the top lane near the inhibitor. So you can see if anyone walks by there later on. It is, of course, pinged out by SK. Do they want the lane swap, though? That's the question. I don't think so. You can see Reckless making his way down to the bottom lane, although Krepo's still hanging around in this river. Yeah, Rictus is moving. Freddy was gonna be able to kill this ward. He's placed a little bit close to the tower. Just inside of vision range. It did but, his job. But they still, they see Freddy now. So, okay, they know Freddy's on the top lane. So we know the bottom lane from, from SK Gaming is gonna be on the bottom side of the map. And we can now start Grom. Oh, Krepo's actually late for this Grom, but they will start it anyway, I believe, with Rictus. There's a ward placed by SK, so they're gonna see everything happening here. They get crooks from them which means they can get in and try and rush by at level two. And Elements didn't start the ground. They came in way too late, so they will be in a disadvantage in this lane at first. And SK know this too. They got that yes, ward on it. Yes, they had the ward on it. And moving down. So now what Elements needs to do is sit back in this lane. Don't start pushing it, because if you push down the wave and you know the other team is going to get level two first because of that camp at level one, then they will be able to zone you away from the rest of the minions. Might even force a flash. So what they're doing here is the correct move sit back and you just have to wait for the wave to be pushed into your tower now before you can really start getting towards that level two point. Unrated hanging out in this brush. Trying to see if anyone is going to check into him. So far, not so. They are down this level and they're zoning them out. Yeah, I am surprised about their level one tactic from Elements. The ward is simple. Um, you want to try and get some information. But Elements or Krepo was so late to the lane he couldn't do Grump even if he wanted to, which meant he would automatically give up the early game or the early stages of the lane. And he already is in a bit of a disadvantage, so you're just making it even harder for yourself. I'm not sure why Elements decided to do that tactic. If they were thinking about swapping and then said, no, no, in the last case, let's just do standard lanes, get Morgana. 
or get the Maokai into Morgana so you get like a free farm lane for um, for Maokai so you can rush towards one or two items which of course is going to be needed for him. I want to see if they can get back though in this bottom lane after falling behind due to that level 2. Yeah, I had to keep an eye on that one. So far they're down about 7 CS versus Forgiven there. And Raided still trying to play the zone game. Both the junglers have been a little bit quiet. Not too surprising that Sven Skarin has been just doing the farm game. It is a Rengar after all. It is a Rengar, yeah. So expected from him. You know top lane is going to push all game long. Morgana is going to push in the Maokai. She's going to get a few hits on the tower, try and get it as low as possible. So if Forgiven and Enraider is winning the bottom lane, they can take the tower, rotate to top lane after, like we see them so often do, and they're going to get a second one really easily because it's already taking a lot of damage from just the Morgana lane itself. But here in the early game, I want to see Shook make plays, especially on the bottom side, because you have a Lantern from the Thresh, and you have an Annie who's an immobile support. That should be the target for him if you want to try to make sure that, first of all, the bot lane tower doesn't go down, and Reckless gets enough farm, because Svenskan is not a threat yet on this Rengar. Well, how about that fan vote, <laughs> wow. Deficio? Serious confidence. We heard it in the audience, man. Maybe they're the ones making the big noise there. I don't think I've ever seen SK win a fan vote. Yeah, that's kind of true. I don't think I have either. They always seem to lose it. They have been winning a lot of games. But they have been winning a lot of games. Down 0 and 3 in the last three of those, but this time forgiven. And then Rated making a big statement. They can't fully deny this farm from Reckless just because the Rocket Folk, the, the range is just too good here. But they can try to keep them back from it for as long as possible. You yep. don't want to eat Nanny Stun when Forgiven's there to buckshot in your face. And this is a perfect SK Gaming start. you got standard lanes and strong laners. You are pushing up every single lane at once, meaning that Shook is going to be tough for him to find the right lane to gank. This one, there's going to be a Black Shield from Freddy, making this Lee Sin gank pretty difficult, and I'm not sure why he's putting his focus on the top lane. The Maokai is, finding, is, is farming fine, and there's a Black Shield from the Morgana. You have the Lantern in the bottom lane instead. I feel like this bottom lane is a lot easier for him to gank. So I'm not sure why he's paying attention or putting his focus on the top side. But yeah, look at this. Every lane has been pushed in. Every tower has been taking a little bit of damage. That's all SK Gaming needs to pull off that 1-3-1 later on. Yeah. If elements don't do anything about that, that's the game that SK wants to play. Sven Skarin now on his jungle route. Going to run into that pink ward. Give him a handy dandy 30 gold after the fact. Shook is going to place down a normal one. And that brush, he's spotted out too. SK definitely have tabs on all of the movements of Elements. And Froggen is really going for a slow build here on Orianna. Rod of Ages seems to be the first item for him. And Orianna again, she is a champion who has zero pressure early on. She needs items. She needs two or three completed before she really wants to start fighting. So you can make a lot of plays around her once Svenskan hits level six. I would not be surprised to see SK use the Zed and Rengar combo to pull off a play either in the jungle of elements or just on the mid lane itself. So by Frog being fairly tanky and having barrier, you can pop him. Well, Fox himself is going on a bit of a roam. He thought he might be able to go for a dive here, but he thinks better of it. Not too soon, too, as Shook comes in on his jungle route, taking care of the Gronk. But Krepo and Reckless have been pushed pretty far back in this bottom lane by Forgiven and Raided, and Shook hasn't made too many moves in that side of the map just yet. They look like they could use it. Yeah, again, just a bad level one setup for elements, and then picking the standard lanes, being late, not doing that camp, really set them so far behind. It doesn't even matter who's playing against who. When you lose that level one to two, and you're already playing like Jinx into Graves, that lane matchup is going to be nearly impossible for you to win. And that's why SK is doing so well in the lane itself. And we keep seeing how the Zed against Orianna matchup. Zed will always push in the wave, and then he looks to roam around. Cutler's first item gives him a lot more all-in potential than the likes of a Brutalizer. A very standard start. But no place has been set up yet. Wait for level 6 on Svenskern. And Shook on his hand. Just been farming. Trying to stay even in levels with, with the Rengar and then look for a counter gank later. Because if Rengar jumps in first, the risk is always you are a champion who can only go one way and that's forward. So when you jump in with your ulti, you're not going to get out again. If Shook is there to counter gank, the Rengar will get popped. He's a fairly squishy target, building warrior enchant. And that can be the go-to tactic for elements. But it requires Shook now to read Svenskan kind of like a book and be there for the first gank. Because these towers, I mean, they're taking a lot of damage. Bot lane down to about 30%. Top lane has been poked down only 15% in the top side. But it's still full control for SK in every single lane. 
Yeah, and that's just the game that they like to play. And they are wanting to get back to the basics here, throwing down three games in a row. They can take down elements here. They can definitely get their confidence back. But for elements, you know, they're, they have the one win against Meet Your Makers under their belt. This is the real test for them right now to see if they themselves can find something they have found. And Raided, who throws down the Tibbers, Forgiven, lands on the Chomper. So really good hook. There is an ultimate there burned. After that hook, after the fact, they will have a slight advantage, but Sven Skarin. He's level Fox. six, and uh -oh. instantly we see the two guys together. Zed Rengar, they're looking for plays to know that Orianna has to clear the wave first in mid lane before she can join. And she's not looking for any fights. You have a cat you have a catalyst only. There's a teleport Sven. coming in. Oh, they're going in. Elements, they're the ones looking for the fight. Nice the play, play backwards. They found Fox. He's going to Deathmark onto Crepo. Meanwhile, there is some Rengar action in the back of the teleport in for Freddy. Kevin is oh so low. Not nearly tanky. That's first blood picked up by and raided, but Shook is gonna answer back safeguards away the ball is on him as well reckless in some trouble they get a pair of top laners each a one for one trade here it was sk who invaded into the jungle of elements and they tried to collapse fast early teleport coming in from kevin they got the one kill but lost a top laner as well and dragon beast this is risky from sk they're taking oh, a yes lot of is. damage reckless was backing too and then he stops it here Crepo. oh he doesn't connect the hook on sven Skarin. so the dragon is going to be stopped here and Reckless not in the greatest situation with his health bar. Oh. The tower's pretty low too, but in Raiden Forgiven looking to shove that down. And as soon as this tower is down in the bottom lane, SK basically have two choices. Okay, do you want to try and force a dragon? Well, we don't have to. Let's just take our bottom lane instead, send him to the top lane, push in the next tower. Because if, if elements try to send Reckless and Crebo to hold off that lane, well, the same thing is going to happen. Forgiven and Raiden is going to keep pushing it in. They're going to get another tower and just keep Reckless there. So basically, they can decide after taking this bot tower where they want to apply the pressure, and nobody's going to be able to stop those two together. Yeah, that's going to be the trouble for Elements. SK, on the other hand, even though they got a little bit greedy in that situation, they didn't pay the price for it after the fact. So, with the top laners, one death each. And the jungler, Shook, was the one who was able to secure that on the side of Elements. And of course, then Raided got that one on the side of SK Gaming. Spence Karen right back at it. He's been hunting crabs quite a lot this game. He's going to be able to get himself another one. Oh, it's a good way to stack up on this Rengar. Get the gold <laughs> if you can catch it. There we go. It does scuttle away pretty quickly. Not fast enough, though. Fast enough. So Frogan has been farming well. He has a very early Rod of Ages for himself. But that's not going to do him any good for the next 10 minutes before it's fully stacked. He's still not looking to do anything other than farm. Same goes for Kevin. Looks like righteous glory for him. In his top lane. We talked about the pros and cons going that route. There is quite a lot of protection here for Frog and Reckless to dish the damage, but that won't happen until the team fight phase. That Rod of Ages, as you mentioned, picked up there by Froggen himself. Mid lane has been relatively quiet. Not so many Zed all ins. Fox has been more interested on the roam. And as long as Elements get to late game, then this Rod of Ages is super smart. Because if you look at the comp from SK, it's all about burst damage. Graves is all about burst in ulti, box shot. Zed obviously with his ulti and Morgana with her ulti. If you survive the first engage from SK on the side of elements, then you can always re-engage and you will have more damage, your more sustained damage later on in the fight. So him getting this Rod of Ages is going to make him fairly tanky. He has the barrier as well. As long as they don't fall too far behind, this is okay for elements. I just fear that once his bot lane tower goes down, then suddenly the top top lane is going to follow the mid lane as well, and SK will be able to split up because nobody's going to stop a Z on this comp from elements. That's all about five on five team fighting. So if they fall too far behind, you're going to get that SK pressure. And it's the one that's been denied from them the last three games where teams have managed to win the early game. Elements are not looking to do the same. Now we'll see if they can win this one on their own terms. They're certainly not going to try anybody else's. A thousand gold separates these two teams right now. Thirteen. Well, 12 and a half minutes, rather, into the game. And no towers taken down just yet. Crepo's hook goes a little bit wide. You see Shook hanging around in this bottom side. They're trying to secure up the vision, but he is spotted out by SK. Can't be too stealthy here. Now, we haven't seen much from this Lee Sin pick. I thought we were going to see him be more aggressive early on. But Shook has just been sitting back farming. Looks like the tower's about to go down. Those minions, although Enraged is the one they're looking for. Crepo actually trying to tank the line. However, he could go down. Here's the Tibbers coming. Oh, oh, oh Forgiven comes up with a pick there. Sven Skarin gets the hop and he gets the flash. Tower still stands, but Crepo doesn't for another eight. No, seconds. everything missed for Crepo here. They tried to set up with Trap into Hook to try and defend the, defend the tower. Everything just ended up missing. He dies for it. Shook came in too late as well. 
That's the first tower now for SK. Is Dragon gonna be the next focus? I mean, Krebo is dead for another few seconds, so that could be an easy one for them. And that's just even better now for SK, because they can swap top lane and don't have to worry about an objective on the other side of the map if they roll in after. Precisely. Spin Scaring gonna tank up a lot of this. Or mid lane. Now I mean, turns on mid or top, they can just. Yeah, no, they have a lot of options under their belt, and there's no response here. They really was not possible for Elements. So SK Gaming gonna pick up that first Dragon of the game. They're starting to look like their old selves again in Elements. They are in a bit of trouble down 2,000 gold now, thanks to that tower on top of the kill. All right, forgiven and ready recalled. Let's see where they go now. They can pick whatever lane and they should be able to push it in for another tower. The Graves is currently sitting on Infinity Edge to a BF sword from Reckless. That is a massive difference. Nobody wants to duel this Graves here. Might even get a red buff and then straight to mid. Frog in a decent wave clear. Oh, it's a nice hook on Ten Raiden. Yeah, Raiden is one caught. They kick him as well. Frog is there. Oh, they weren't able to connect on the shockwave. Didn't time that one up the way they wanted. And then Raiden walks out of it. Walks out, but you can see our elements. They know there's nothing left for SK to gain on the bottom side of the map, so they put all the focus on the top side in terms of warding. And then that's where the next few plays are going to be around because it's the top and mid lane. For SK to push down, no dragon, no bot lane tower. That's why they roam up here, set up the early wards, almost got a pick for it, and Red managed to flash out of the shockwave and stay alive. Interestingly enough, Reckless isn't freezing this bottom lane. He's trying to push this one out. He's actually gonna get joined by Crepo down on the bottom. He's gonna need the help too, because Forgiven is still there. Fair amount of CS separates these two. You can see the item differential. Reckless sitting on a couple of pieces of a Bloodthirster, actually. Well, Forgiven has already completed that Infinity Edge. Should just be Infinity Edge for Reckless and just keeping that lifesteal because he was getting poked out or out-traded in the lane itself. He's currently sitting on. Not enough gold to get his Infinity Edge, so Pickaxe should be the go-to one. Might be a little while before he's going to yeah. be super effective, he's but it has been. Really far back, and now we go, there we go. Yep. Forgiven into the mid lane, take the Z down to the bottom lane. You have your 1-3-1. Perfect setup. Morgana's gonna take this tower on her own just by keep pushing it in over and over. There's no threat of killing Freddy from the Maokai Lee Sin now. So you're gonna basically see two more auto turrets go down fairly soon if SK can play the way they want to. It's only frogging with proper wave clear at the moment. No static shift yet for Regulus. That's gonna take a while for him to help Doriana wave clear. And nobody's gonna stop Zed in a one-on-one -on -one either. So SK Gaming really gets to play their style. Elements, they pick themselves into a very, very slow comp. And they messed up level one, got in a big disadvantage in the bottom lane. And they're paying for it at the moment. They are paying the price. Trying to make Look something happen. another kill though. Yeah, here we go. Gonna connect the Q, goes in on and Raiden kicks him a little bit of one direction. They're gonna bring him back in, however, with the Shockwave taking him down, but Krepo's the one that gets the kill. Now, however, SK looking for revenge. Here we go, Deathmark is on, Shook is popped, and Fox is looking for Frog and collateral damage. Everyone from Elements bailing out Fox, trying to find even more, but he shadow steps back to safety. Frog and stays alive. It is a one for one, however. One for one again. So Elements, they group fairly early. They look for a few picks. They got on in Raiden this time. No flash for him. And the Rod of Ages plus Barrier kept Frogging alive. Still trading one for one. There's no teleport for Kevin. He's still sitting in the top Whoa, lane. That's pretty low here. Yeah, he is. You know, okay, there we go. The shield's uh, out. The rocket got not the gonna well. hit. I think Reckless hesitated a little bit on that one. He was trying to bait the shield out, but... Well, it's not like the Dark Bind, or excuse me, the Black Shield one would have caught it. But that was a good trade by Elements because in the top lane, it bought Kevin time to get some damage on the tower. We saw Freddy join the fight in the bottom, or on the bottom side of the map. So that was actually a good trade. Getting a one for one, they looked for the pick onto and rated. No deep wards from SK to spot how many from Elements were going for it and no flash from earlier. And now Teleport coming in. As long as they only trade a one, as long as they trade a one for one, that is fine because you've got the Teleport out of Freddy. You bought time for Kevin. And we see Frog with the Rod of Ages and all the shielding, keeping him alive. Yeah, clutch exhaust down. You saw it then there too. Krepo has been really monster roaming all across this map. Now him and Reckless are gonna be moving up top, but they're not really required to try and polish this one off. It looks like it's gonna go down on its own. Kevin, however, they could use the back over the second time. There's the lantern, out to safety. And this is all due to that last fight where Kevin got so much damage on the tower. Elements could just let him push, roam up at least the support so there was some safety, like a lantern to pull him out if he got ganked trying to kill that tower. So trying to keep it fairly even. Mid tower is still really low. Forgiven is going to take it down. Top tower needs one or two hits from an AD carry, and that's going to die as well. And then SK will have opened up the map. 
and can start pushing down the minions. So it's not all good, but the last trade at least in favor of elements. Dragon is going to be up in a little over a minute now. Elements will not want to give this one up. SK, they were once the kings of controlling the dragon. Recent weeks, it has fallen off just a bit. We'll see if that continues or if they can secure another one here. So far, a lot of vision for SK. Actually, they've invested in quite a lot of river wars this time around. Tower up top does get taken by Freddy. They grab some more global gold. Yeah, and elements right now, it's super important you keep your own jungle warded and you clear it from the SK wards because you're going to have to need that when you rotate between the lanes. If you get into that point where you're stuck at your own tier 2 turret in top lane, mid lane, and bottom lane, and SK can freely move into your jungle between the lanes and push down every lane at once, then you get to that point where you have no answer. Because you cannot go anywhere, you will lose a tower, you will end up dying if you ever go into your own jungle because you've lost full control of it. So as long as they keep decent wards here and try and clear it from SK, it also allows them to roam a little bit like we saw before. Crepo joining with like Shook, look for a pick on their side, but they keep playing around this top side. Kevin is pushing down again, he has teleport from potential dragon to this mid lane tower is there. Yeah, it's gone, Reckless could not save that one, he was able to push it in. Now he's actually gonna dash forward, Reckless half his health bar already gone. It's not the most timely situation there, as dragon is now alive, Shook running for it. Yeah, yeah no Fox fighting here. Karen, no, they're, they're not gonna nope. be able to fight this one, they're gonna have to give it up. Yeah, right here. You don't want to fight against SK. They are so strong at this point. This is the mid game where the entire comp just spikes. Ring off, fantastic mid game jungler, falls a bit off in the late game. Graves, same for the ADK one. Zed, the same for mid lane. And Morgana, the same for top lane. Every single champion from SK falls off at least a little bit going into the late game, but they are so, so strong in this mid game stage. And that's why you don't see elements fight for it. And why this fifth dragon thing might become a thing now for SK. It's what they've used in the past. If they played a strong mid game comp, they would get a massive lead, get all the dragons. And even though you got to late game, you wouldn't be able to stop because you would be, you'd be forced into a bad fight around that fifth dragon, and then you would lose after that. Now, elements are far from out of it just yet, but they are starting to give SK the pieces that they've traditionally been able to succeed with. Two dragons to start this game off. Bit of a gold lead for them, and they are getting slowly pushed back in their own jungle. Let's see what they can grab back here. Blue buff now being started by Frog. And SK really adapting and improving their wards, vision control, early ping wards being bought for them. They've been placed all around the bottom side of the map near the dragon. Fairly defensive, but they're there. Trinket upgraded by Freddy. That's the thing he hasn't done before, even though it's only 250 gold for him. So he now has a disc discount sidestone. I think they realized there were some big mistakes they used to have, or you used to do, and now trying to fix it. And so far it's paying off for them. Yep, it's bad news for Elements, but it's good news for SK Gaming. See if they can close those holes in their playstyle. Here we go, Freddy. A bit of a roam. Shoots the Dark Binding, it's not going to connect on Kevin. Go back to clearing the waves. There's a few D wards, and again for SK, they can just keep sitting in 1-3-1. One, one. If they want to, they can even go 1-4. Just take the Morgana down with your AD carry in the mid lane to push in that lane, and you suddenly control just two lanes at once. But then SK is going to need some D wards in this blue side jungle, or blue buff jungle from Elements. They are moving there right now. No sidestone from Enraided, however. That's a new one. I'm blind. There's a sidestone. It's just a different there. type of sidestone. I was like, <laughs> looking at it, like, oh, that's a ruby crystal. Hmm, no sidestone. Yeah. What's going on here? That was a bit of a mistake. It's okay. The dress isn't blue, it's red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it looks so good, and then sidestone. Yeah, it's quite all right, man. Now, you're off the hook, Enraided. Yes. Well, Crepo, let's hope he's on the hook here. No, no one's going to be able be in range for that one. Crepo's going to go ahead and back. Still the wave clear here for SK Gaming. Trying to push this one in, and they are doing not a 1-3-1, one, one, but a 4-1 right now. Fox hanging around this bottom side. But again, it, it's hard to all in on Frog, and this guy is very, very safe. He's on the Orianna too. Yeah, which is why normally when we see SK do the split pushing, it's not about killing people one-on-one, -on -one, even with a Z. You just push up the wave, and then you walk into the enemy jungle, and you walk straight to mid lane. And suddenly you have five guys mid lane collapsing onto whoever's trying to defend, while the enemy, let's say mid lane in this case, is stuck in the bottom lane wave clearing. And you create a big numbers advantage, you get a, a few kills, you get a mid tower, and that's how you keep playing the map, just by pressuring down every single lane at once. Freddy's now in the top lane. For him, he need to push that one back. I mean, again, they have two options, either 1-3-1 one, one, or 1-4. One, He's got the teleport available too. This is really not risky at all right now. So while elements are doing a good job of pushing 
SK back from their attempts. They're not really gaining any ground here. They're trying to get a little bit of vision in the bottom side jungle, but they've not been able to push in for any more towers. And as a result, SK can just play the game they want, where they are dictating where the pressure on yeah. the map has to be, and elements are the ones responding sure. to it. And SK is in their position now as well, where they might just want to wait for five dragons. Despite going late game, getting that fifth dragon is such a massive spike, and it's a uh -oh. thing, again, we have seen before. He's got a teleport playing They're going in for fighting, yeah, though. Kevin could be in some trouble. Can he grab the lantern? Yes, he can. And a whole lot of shots fired after the fact. Freddy, though, is not keen to let this one go. Froggen, he's the target, and Raiden is going to be the one taking him down. Elements scattered to the winds as they try to escape from this one. SK Gaming reckless and shook. No, the Dark Binding will not connect. That could have been a hell of a lot worse. But SK, when they pounce, they hurt. Uh, for sure. The first time we really see Elements move away from their own towers in a few minutes and suddenly SK see an opening with the ring guard. They go straight for this Baron. Five guys. Froggen is dead for another 15 seconds. He won't be able to join. This is a bold call here. You know, Kevin's not involved. Kevin has TP. He does have TP, however, but Freddy, he's on the zone. Here comes Shook. He's actually going to safeguard up. Can he possibly get the seal? Oh no! They've got him locked up and the Baron's going down a teleport now for Kevin. He's going to have to cancel it. Did not quite execute and that dark binding prevented the 50-50 smite fight. Let's see how that one happened again, this earlier fight, rather. The element is pushing out despite not having any warts on the flank against the likes of a Rengar and Morgana coming in from the side of SK here. Just a very, very risky move, and they get punished for it. Froggen ends up dying. There's so much CC being used to lock him down, and now they can go straight for this Baron. If you suddenly move out and you have no warts, at least on one of the sides of the, of the river, it is very easy for Rengar to get the right engage, like we just saw. And in that fight, too, it was really, really good timing from SK. Not only had they caught Frog, and obviously you're going to focus on whoever you managed to get caught out, but they took him down right before his shockwave went off. So as a result, they couldn't have any potential to turn that one around on Element's side. Now Dragon's 30 seconds away. SK are looking very, very good here. They're 5,000 gold up, and they're starting to look back to form, which we saw them from a few weeks ago. First game in two weeks for SK, where they get to play Great lane matchups, and they get to win them. And that's why they can go back to play oh, the SK oh, style winner. Froggen! There is the oh. shockwave. It might bail him out, but he had to use that ultimate to make it happen. SK Gaming still. They're going to no get Dragon. contest for this Dragon, Fine. I think, though. So. That kill was not important for them. They want the Dragon anyway. 3-0 coming in. No response available. Four elements. They're really just. The comp is too slow. Early game, completely misplayed. We've talked about it time and time again. But it's just allowed SK to play their style. And yes, they've lost a few games in a row, but they still know how to play this one, where you get to dictate the entire map and you are stronger on every single member, so you can just pick the fights you want. And this is on Elements. They Spend gave this to them. Yeah, they did. He's they did. gonna go in. He's gonna look for Kevin. How tanky can the tree be? Tanky enough, as they don't want to dive the tower, but this is another tower that's going down right now. It's picked up by SK Gaming. Three dragons, two none. 26 and a half minutes in. A seriously solid gold lead here. And SK Gaming are marching on inhibitor turrets. Your AD carry right now is three items completed, and the other team's AD carry is still waiting for a second one really shows how far ahead Forgiven is. Yeah, it wasn't just, right just that level one, but it really snowballed for it. It snowballed. In that it's situation. all the outer turrets. The thing is, if every lane is winning and you keep poking down these towers slowly but surely, they will die. You suddenly get three towers. That's a lot of global gold. A big spike the other team is not able to follow. And that's basically what they used. There was one good play by Elements where they roamed, forced a TP from Freddy, which gave them a top tower, but that's been it. Yeah, it's not that bloody of a game at six kills total in 27 minutes, but the objective focus from SK has not been denied by elements whatsoever. Another tower goes down in the middle. Great use of this Baron buff, empowering the minions, and just making sure that elements cannot safely try to take a fight. There is a big wave pushing in the top side, but it's looking like it's not going to be big enough, and SK are able to back off, deal with that whenever yeah. they want. Just get the two, two towers here, then you reset. The whole thing. You go back, you shop with all the gold, you just acquired from getting these towers, and you look at the map and say, okay, what's our next objective? Dragon is not going to spawn for a few more minutes, same goes for Baron, so now we're going to look for this top lane tower, the last outer turret, which means we need a slow push in the bottom lane, and then we need to push mid and top lane at the same time. So they're pushing up, put the Zed in the mid lane, put the Morgana in the mid lane, doesn't really matter. Push those up, ward up the top side jungle of Elements, and then suddenly you will get that tier 2 turret, because Elements is not able to get an engage onto you, not able to really defend from it, because you're pushing two lanes at once. We've talked a lot about what SK wants to do and what they've been able to do this game, but what do elements need to do to get back on the board? What are their win conditions in this game right now, Deficio? Uh, wait about 25 minutes and don't lose any inhibitors. 
and try and make it TSM versus Liquid for you. That's basically gonna be it. Well, sounds like an elements game to me. See if they can make it happen. Trying to play the long game. That is how they have preferred to do it. 28 and a half minutes still is the time on the clock right but now. But it's also how they've been punished. Yes. That's why I don't true. understand. The way we have seen Team PDSK is by picking strong early game and don't just let them roll over you in the laning phase. And yet Elements picks three somewhat weak laners all around. Take standard lanes. Say, okay. SK, you want to play your own style? There you go. Well, and... The question of it is, too, how much was that the strategic call and how much was the comfort pick? Because Shook goes for the least in when the Rengar was still available, when it uh, might have been a little bit more useful in that situation. Reckless going a little too far forward, takes the Lantern out. They still are looking for maybe sneaking an objective, but it's so dangerous for them to go. Here comes Svenskaren, he's getting the hop on, he gets played back. The hook in on and raided the box is down. They blow quite a lot, and they're just able to dodge around it. Crepo now is in some trouble. Here comes Fox. Oh my goodness, the Tibbers lands. Reckless is down without much of a fight. Freddy looking for Kevin, forcing the flash away from Shook, or excuse me, away from Kevin. They got three or two kills just like that. And look at and the two sidelines here. Out. Talking about how SK can just go slow push at least one of them. They took two at once, then collapsed on the mid lane. Again, Elements, they're trying to move out of their base. They're trying to make an aggressive play. But you are not strong enough to do that. And you just allow Svenskan once again on Rengar to find the right engage. The wards on the flank is so hard for Elements to pull off because they're just going to move down there, get one hit on the tower, then engage happens. So they have no way of spotting the Rengar first and then disengaging after. Top lane wave is massive for them. SK can go up there, take the tier two turret for themselves, get a few D boards on the way as well. You're just gonna see the engage. Roaming from the two side lanes from SK. Trepo is being caught out first, trying to sacrifice himself. And then Rick is already fairly low. Gets popped. Last little Q. And he dies. Yeah, SK Gaming come up pretty big in that situation. Controlling this game just like they want to. 10,000 gold in the lead at 30 and a half minutes in Elements, still struggling just to keep it safe. And you look at all the wards now too, SK Gaming, they really have heard the wake up call. You can see them just littering it around to make sure that they have the vision on Elements at all times. They also have all the dragons. Next one, one minute, barely 30 seconds. They can go for both these objectives. Elements is still not in a position to fight. You have three items now in Froggen, so that's good. But Regulus is still really far behind compared to Forgiven. So you're going to have to catch out someone from from SK. And that's what they're trying to do here. Just try and go for like a flash play, which is nearly impossible for you to pull off. But you need to create a pick somehow. Otherwise, SK can just take this Baron. Or just shove up the middle. Or just do whatever they want. They can take Baron now because they push in the super minions. They have all the wards in the jungle. So, yeah. Either you try and make a play that very rarely will work. Or you just give up the Baron anyway. Maybe steal it with Shook. Not oh, wait in the bush. Back, oh, they've caught and raided, but there is the Tibbers coming down. Crepo getting blown up. The teleport coming in. This is going to be too late. They pull in a couple with the Shockwave. Shook, Froggen all melting. It's a double kill going over to Freddy. One, two, two. Kevin and Froggen trying to save the day, but I don't think they can make the difference here. That is going to be the ace for SK Gaming. Teleport now, trying to They're end gonna this go for game. The finish. Oh, yeah, SK. Long death timers for Elements. Yeah, they SK don't Gaming. mess around. Win the fight, and they're gonna go straight for the Nexus. They've got the Super Minions. Elements tried to make the big play with three members. They were punished, they were isolated. It's still five seconds until Krepo's gonna come back up. Nexus Tower is starting to fall here. They've got to make the save, but it's only Krepo that's just respawned. Second Nexus Tower is down. SK looking to end this one, just trying to zone Krepo off. There's nothing he can do. SK Gaming, 32 minutes in. I guess they got the swagger back. For sure, I mean, SK Gaming just got to play their style. Elements in the pick and ban phase said, you like to play early game? Right, let's go full late game. And just let you control the lanes. We mentioned this a few times in the game itself, but SK here, they could be happy with this win. They got to show that 1-3-1 one, one can still work. You gotta wonder, going down three games, if they maybe had gotten inside their own heads, but that Proves they can still play the game they want to, especially yeah. if it's handed to them on a silver platter like yeah, that. Sure. Shaking hands with the members of Elements. They don't seem too perturbed by that, but they themselves now have a little bit of questions to answer as to why they let SK have everything they wanted. Yeah, I I'm not sure. I think we're going to have to hear from the players themselves what the tactic was going to be in this game here. It just definitely looked way too easy for SK to win the lanes and 
play the style they want to. So, not a whole lot to say in that part, except for SK. Great for him to get a win on the board, lost three in a row. We talked to Innerflame yesterday about what was wrong on the team. He said they've been a bit sick, which means they lost practice. But as a team, you know, they still believe they are one of the best. They certainly make it a statement for that one. You can see him there. The sight smiles on the faces of members of SK Gaming after that one. And, you know, it was a well-deserved win. There was really nothing sure. Elements could do. They, they Credit to them to try to make some proactive plays. But that time around, it just seems like they weren't ready for what SK was going to throw at them, especially yeah. when they played their game. The early game, we saw Elements try and make some roams, like Crepo shook together. They got in raided twice. He survived the first one with the flash. He died the next time. And they traded a one-for-one one where they got teleported. Mm -hmm. That was a good play. But in order for your comp to survive that early game, you would have to make five, ten of those plays and use that to kind of get to your mid-game or late-game point. Because even yet, Jinx, Maokai, Oriana, all really slow scalers. So it just wasn't enough for them. And SK were ready. They bought a lot more wards in this game here, so they were ready for every single fight that happened. And full credit to them. They're back on the board. Now they can go home and look at, and look at next week and say, how do we keep playing like this? And should we keep buying wards? Because it seemed to work.